parts of the capital are without power and water after Russian airstrikes hit the city's critical infrastructure. Residents have been warned to remain in shelters because of the possibility of renewed shelling according to the Kyiv military administration, which has been warning people today. Well, earlier I spoke to the BBC's Hugo Bechega from the Ukrainian capital, Kyiv. We've been given the all clear from the authorities, so we're back here in our uh, usual uh, position in Kyiv. So uh, what we know is that critical infrastructure has been hit here in the capital. As you said, uh, there are reports of uh, power cuts across uh, the city, also uh, water outages across uh, the capital this morning. Uh, there have been uh, attacks also reported in the city of Kharkiv, which is the country's second largest uh, city in the northeast of the country. Uh, the mayor just moments ago describe the situation as quite complicated in the city. And in Zaporizhia, in the south, again, critical infrastructure was uh, hit. And uh, again, power cuts have been reported in the city of Zaporizhia. And we had reaction from the country's uh, foreign minister, Dmitry Kuleba, uh, who said, uh, instead of fighting on the battlefields, Russia fights civilians. And it seems to be part of the strategy here. Russia has been attacking civilian infrastructure across the country for weeks uh, ahead of winter. So uh, there is a lot of concern here that uh, because of these attacks, the system is not going to be able to cope. This is a country where the temperatures can drop to minus 15, minus 20 degrees Celsius. Uh, President Zelensky has said that a third of this country's electricity infrastructure has been uh, damaged. Uh, and I think last week we heard a dramatic plea from one of the country's deputy prime ministers saying, uh, telling Ukrainians who fled the country to stay where they are to help ease the pressure on the system and to return only after winter. So there is a lot of concern that these attacks are going to continue. And again, the Ukrainians are saying that this is how the Russians are reacting, are responding to uh, setbacks on the battlefield by attacking civilian sites and civilian infrastructure in cities across the country, including places away from the front lines. Well, joining me now is Charlie Salonius Pasternak, a leading research fellow at the Finnish Institute of International Affairs. It's good to talk to you, Charlie. Let me ask you, first of all, this uh, renewed targeting of civilian infrastructure. What does it tell us about what the Russians are thinking right now? Well, quite clearly, they don't see uh, a lot of success on the military battlefield and are or have moved for some time now to strike purely at civilian targets, infrastructure targets, uh, with the goal clearly of creating some sort of pressure for uh, Ukrainian political leadership to negotiate. But in fact, history suggests that the um, opposite is going to happen. Ukrainian population are just going to strengthen uh, in their determination not to give in. And so you're saying that even if they do target these parts of civilian infrastructure, it has the opposite effect. Uh, that is what research literature frequently suggests. There has been for a century this idea that you can bomb the civilian population into submission. But of course, uh, um, you know, people living in London know very well from, from uh, previous wars that this isn't the case. Uh, it's, of course, also important to note that these are war crimes. Um, it is completely illegitimate to strike targets like these with the express purpose of injuring civilians or, or civilian infrastructure, infrastructure. So where does this leave the West in terms of its supply of munitions, of anti-drone, anti-air defense systems? How key are they now to be continued? Uh, very key. I mean, what we're seeing now is, of course, helping. And you certainly have to take Ukrainian claims of from this morning of having shot down 44 out of 50 um, uh, drones or, or missiles with a grain of salt. But there is success. One can only imagine if arms supplies in terms of anti-air systems, for example, uh, were to end or diminish uh, what damage uh, even 50 strikes could do as opposed to maybe half a dozen or a dozen that got through. Let's talk about the bigger picture now and the nuclear war gaming, the language we've been seeing coming uh, from the Russian side. How worrying is that? Uh, very worrying. Um, of course, the exercise we've seen both on the Russian side, Grum and then NATO steadfast, uh, were planned well in advance. And we know that each side has told the other side of this. So they're kind of a, a separate path, but certainly into the public discussion and consciousness, these things are, are certainly interlinked. 
and nuclear weapons have been discussed in, in a way that probably not since, uh, well, the Cuban Missile Crisis in the early 60s. So where does that leave the West in terms of its attitude towards what's happening in Ukraine? Should it change it or should the West hold fast? I think it is imperative to hold fast. Um, if the West now is collectively seen to be weak, uh, stop supporting Ukraine, Russia, but also every other country like it, every authoritarian country is going to say, we need nuclear weapons and then we can blackmail whatever we want, whenever we want from the West. And that would be obviously a terrible signal um, to, to all of us. Okay, Charlie, it's been good to talk to you. Thank you very much.